and we are going to continue with math. So let me go ahead and share my screen so we can see what we're doing in math today. All right, so this looks familiar, doesn't it? All right, we're going to do some subitizing. I have my cards. I brought them home from school. So remember, when I show you the number, I want you to put it up on your fingers. Even though Miss Houston can't see you, I want to pretend like I'm seeing you put up the right number. That way that we can all shout it out together, just like we do in class, okay? So when I put it up, make sure you put it on your fingers first, okay? And then we'll, then we'll shout it out together, okay? Here's the first one. Oh, let me, again, make my screen bigger so y'all can see. There we go. All right. Put this number up on your fingers. If you need to count, that's okay too. All right, what is this number? Two, good job. Put it up on your fingers. What is this number? One, good job. All right, hold on, Miss Houston, got this one upside down. All right, remember when it has the cross on it, that means it's a group of So I see five. How many do you see? Eight, good. Five, six, seven, eight, excellent. Let's try this one. How many do you see? 10, five and five makes 10, five, 10. Good, another tally mark. I don't see a cross, so what does that tell you? How many do you see here? Four, very good. All right, let's do a couple more. How many do you see here? Zero, awesome, awesome. Okay, we will save the rest for tomorrow. So now I'm gonna back, go share my screen back again. Awesome, awesome job. Okay, what I want you to do now is pause the video if you want, and um, you can go on YouTube to see our number song. You know how we do pink fong every day? Go straight down and then you're done. All those videos are on our YouTube channel under math or counting so or writing numbers. So you can find them there and then you can practice singing along there and practice writing. So we have our number one is first. What do you think comes after one? Two, good, you guys are so smart. So go ahead and get out a piece of paper or a notebook that I gave you in your bucket and practice writing the numbers in order from one to 10. One, two, three, what comes after three? Four, we already have five, fill in the blanks. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Practice writing those. And if you would, comment below your picture when you're done if you want to. Otherwise, just have a parent or somebody check and make sure that you did your numbers all right, just like on the video, okay? Awesome, let's move forward for our number recognition. This is just gonna be like our letter recognition, just like we do in class when my, when my mouse, or my, you see this little arrow thing? When it's above the number, that's our cue to close our lips. And when it's down below, that's our cue to all shout it out together. So we're gonna do it just the same like we do it in class. Okay, ready? Go. 10. Six. Awesome. Say it out loud. Three. One. Two. You guys are doing great. Keep saying them out loud. Zero. Four, nine, I should be hearing you through my computer. Five, loud and proud. Seven, good, now we have our bigger numbers. Let's see if you remember. Remember when it ends in a zero, it's a, it's a multiple of 10. 20, this is what number? 20, good, how about this one? When it has a one at front, that's a teen number. 15, what is that one? 15, great, how about this one? 18, very good, because there's an eight and it's a teen number, good, 18. How about this one? 11, what is that one again? That's a tricky one. 11, good, how about this last one? Eight, awesome job. 
you can practice writing all those numbers on your whiteboard or in your notebook and that will really help you stay focused. Awesome, awesome job. Okay, now our shape. So when I point to a shape, when, my, when I do a little circle right here in a shape, I want you to shout out the shape. I wanna hear you all the way from my room where I'm filming this video, okay? Ready? What is this shape? Diamond, good. What is this shape? Hexagon, how about this one? Oval, rectangle, good. I can't hear you. Triangle, awesome. Square, circle, very good. All right, let's move to 3D shapes now. All right, please tell me what is this one? That is a cylinder, good, cylinder. Say cylinder cylinder. Good. What is this one? A cube. Good. How about this one? It's not a circle because it's a solid shape. It's 3D. So this is a sphere. Say it again. This is a sphere. Good. What is this one? A per prism. And how about this one? Ice cream cone. And the last one is a Pyramid, very good. All right, let's do a little review here. Which ice cream is measured correctly? Remember when we were learning how to measure and we were using our um, popsicle sticks and our rulers, when I told you to go around our class and measure something, I told you something important about how to measure. Where did the ruler have to be next to something that you are measuring? Think about that and answer which of these pictures is measuring the ice cream correctly. Which one? Which one helps you tell how tall the ice cream is? Did you pick this one? If so, you were right. That's because you have to line up. Look at where my, at the bottom of the blue ice cream. They have to line up. If this isn't, is this lined up over here? No, that means we can't tell how tall it is if we're not at the bottom of the ruler. Because look, over here we know they start at the same place and we can count up one, two, three, four circles tall. Can we tell one, two, three, four, five how tall this one is if it's, if it's up in the air? No, the ice cream's cheating a little bit. He's trying to be taller than he really is. So the ruler, and the thing we're measuring have to be at the same level on the bottom. So that is why that is the right answer. Very good. All right, today we are going to use objects to draw and find how many are left, okay? So how many are left? In a way that we can make this a little bit harder and challenging for those of you who already know how to do addition of subtraction is we'll be writing the number sentence too, okay? So the first one is the cat, Eight, how many? Three mice. Cross out three mice. So this cat came along and ate three mice. Uh-oh. So first things first, we have to cross out three mice. So I'm gonna use this arrow and cross out a mouse. I think he ate this one too. That one looks delicious. And this one, he was so close to him, he couldn't ate him right up. All right, so we crossed out three mice. Now we wanna know, how many mice are left? Look at your screen and tell me how many mouses, how many mice did he not eat? How many are left? How many mice stayed alive and didn't get eaten by the cat? One? I only see one, two. So let's go ahead and write our answer in the box. And next we are going to make sure that we write a number sentence for this. So how many, <laughs> remember we need to do part, part, whole. Okay, how many did we start with? How many mice did we start with? One, two, three, four. Okay, so let's write four. We started with four. Did we add more mice or did we take away mice? Hmm, look at the screen. Do we add or take away? I think we took away because we crossed them out, right? There's no more mouse here. So we, we did a subtraction, we took away, we had four, then we took away how many? How many did we cross out, remind me? One, two, three, you're right. So we had four and we took away three. And we ended up with how many? 
one. So we took away three. So now we need an equal sign. Four, take away three, equals how many? How many did was our answer? How many mouse, mice were left? One. So let's see if our number sentence is right. Four, take away three, equals one. We started with four mice. We took away one, two, three. And how many do we have left? One. So our answer is one right next to the equal sign. Excellent job, my friends. Let's do another example together. The fish fish ate two worms. If he ate the worms, should we cross them out or should we add more worms if, if the fish or if the worms got eaten? What do you think? I think we should cross them out too. So let's cross out two worms because the fish ate two worms. I think that worm looks yummy, so I'm going to cross him out and, ooh, that, yummy, that worm looks like it wanted to be eaten. So I'm going to cross him out too. We crossed out two worms because the fish ate how many worms? Two. Great. So the fish ate two worms. How many worms were left after he ate those two delicious worms? Just look on your screen. How many worms are left? How many worms do you see left? Oops, Miss Houston is going a little crazy on her computer. Oh, I heard somebody say three. If you said three, you're right. Look, one, two, three. Three worms were left. So we need to put that number in our answer box. Three. You can even write that number down on your worksheet if you or on your um, notebook if you want to practice writing numbers. Since we were so smart and got that so easily, let's go ahead and take it a step further and make a number sentence. Okay? So we started with how many worms? Hmm. Before we cross them off, how many did we have? Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five. So we have to start with the first big number. Then how many did we cross out? How many did the fish eat? <coughs> Excuse me. He ate two. When he eats worms, does that mean we're adding more worms? Or does that mean we're taking away worms? Taking away. So is this the right thing to do right here? Is this takeaway? Oh, no, silly misusing. This is takeaway. Okay, thank you guys for helping me. So five, takeaway. How many do we cross out again? Two equals. Our equal sign is this one right here. How many do we have left? Three, exactly. Oh, no, my, my thing is reconnecting. So you would see five, takeaway, two equals Three. There we go. Thank you for your patience. Awesome. Awesome. I am going to put this one up here for you to do on your own. The frog ate five flies. He must have been so hungry. He ate five flies. So cross out five flies. If you want to pause and draw your flies and your frog and then cross out five of those flies. And then write down the answer. How many are left? And then if you want to take it a step further, Make your number sentence. What take away what equals what? All right, so you do this one on your own. Pause the video, and then I will come back with the answer in a second. Pause right here. All right, welcome back, guys. This is the answer that you should have. Cross out five flies. We started with seven. We took away five. And we ended up with two. I hope this is what you had on your paper. If not, you can pause the video and fix what you were thinking. I know you guys were using your brains thinking hard on that one. Very good job. All right, last thing I have to share for our math centers is, just like I did for reading centers, I have a suggestion for what to do now post the lesson. You can do education.com. The link is on my Facebook page, how to do that. Happynumbers.com, both two great great um, math game resources and um, it teaches directly to um, the Eureka, which is what I teach from. Number writing, both on the whiteboard or the notebook. Like I said, they can practice writing number sentences. They can practice doing picture sentences. Anything like that is gonna keep them thinking about numbers, writing numbers, talking about numbers is gonna be perfect. Using our manipulatives, using those unifix cubes, using those coins or even Play-Doh, hands-on learning with shapes is really, really great and definitely helpful for them. If you have one of these books, you can do a worksheet from it. One or two a day would be great. 
And that is all I have for me.